Now, the UK steel industry is smaller than it once was, but it still employs nearly 80,000 people, both directly the steel makers and via supply chains, while contributing billions to the UK economy. Now, someone who knows all about steel and the use of steel across this vital industry is Dr. David Moore. He runs the British Constructional Steelwork Association, a trade body which for more than a century has represented UK and Irish structural steel sectors, both at home and overseas. So here he is, Dr. David Moore, my latest guest on Money Talks. David, great to have you on the show. Uh, we've talked in the past. I've shown a big interest in the steel sector over the years and no, at no time more than yesterday because I didn't really detect much in the Chancellor's statement that's going to help companies that are very intensive users of steel. Now, your organisation, you don't represent steel makers. You represent the engineers, the manufacturers who use steel, a huge body of the British economy. What did you think of the statement? I think you're right, Liam. I think uh, the Chancellor's uh, spring statement didn't actually include anything on the, the energy uh, and the cost of energy that uh, UK companies actually use. Uh, although we are steel fabricators, we actually do want to see a thriving British steel industry in the UK. So naturally we're concerned about the energy they use and the price of steel c comes out of British steel. Over the past sort of few months, the cost of gas, electricity has mushroomed in price. Oh, mushroom. That's a great verb, but it's right in this case. Yep. I mean, electricity prices were something like uh, £48 pounds per, per, per megawatt hour in 2019, and now are close to £400. Pounds That's an unbelievable exactly, rate of increase. Exactly, exactly. And that price has got to be passed on to the actual consumer in terms of the fabrication of steelwork. And let me tell you, in terms of the actual steelwork contractors, they actually have to... Uh, take a risk on what the steel price will be when they're actually putting the contracts together. And the contracts they put together can actually be months in advance of actually mm. buying the steel. Mm. So naturally when the steel, see steel increases of £250 a tonne, uh, that's an enormous increase and it's difficult to actually estimate that months in advance. So a lot of them might well be running at losses uh, in the next sort of few months and years. Wow. And maybe their viability will come into question. Now, again, to stress for viewers and listeners, you don't represent the firms that make the steel. No. Uh, they employ about 30,000 people across the UK, across various sites. You represent people that use steel on a commercial basis, heavy industry, manufacturers, uh, and so on. So your members, David Moore, can buy steel from anywhere, can't they? They can buy steel from mainland Europe. They can buy steel from China. How, how competitive is British steel? I know your members will want to buy British. Yes. Of course they will, not least because steel is heavy to transport. Exactly. Uh, so they want to buy British anyway, yeah. uh, but they'll want to buy British maybe psychologically as well to build long-term relationships. So how competitive is that British steel, given that our British steelmakers are very energy intensive, there's no price cap on energy for firms, unlike households, mm -hmm. And UK gas, UK energy is a lot more expensive than many other European countries. Well, in terms of the actual sort of steel industry, there's about 50% is actually British steel, and actually 50% is actually coming from uh, European countries. In terms of the steel use by your steel members? Steel use by my members, yeah. exactly, yes. Yeah. But you're right in what you're saying, the actual energy costs in the UK are so much higher than they are in Europe. Why is that, David? I've never really got that. My understanding is there's, there's some kind of discount that the, uh, the European governments actually give to manufacturing in Europe, and that's about 30%. It's 30% lower in actual Europe compared to actually the UK price. Mm. That's a significant sort of increase. Because their governments are supporting their steel makers more than our government is supporting our steel Correct. makers. Correct. That's, that's, that's exactly a kind right. of traditional thing, though. Is it, is it an ideological thing? I, I think it's ideological, but it's clearly actually sort of a, a disbenefit for our industry in comparison to actually European makers. Now, your members, they'll get steel, they'll form the steel into, you know, very uh, complex components in many cases. There's a huge amount of very yeah. skilled work that goes on. Now, ministers tell me all the time how much infrastructure we're building here in Britain. We're building bridges and, and road extensions and we're building HS2, of course, the biggest yes. infrastructure project in Europe. I remember Boris Johnson standing up at the dispatch box when a lot of the Tory backbenchers were extremely sceptical about HS2, saying, don't worry, chaps, 
and chap S's. We'll use lots of British steel in HS2, so that makes us another reason why you've got to back HS2. Is it happening? Uh, in a word, no, but as I wow. say, HS2 is the largest uh, infrastructure programme in Europe. It's about £110 billion. And we the estimate, rest. <laughs> we estimate they will use about 1.7 million tonnes of steel. Yeah. 400,000 tonnes of that is actually structural steel that British Steel and Tata produce in actually the UK. You're right. How much of that is being used? Well, when I actually look at the contracts that they're letting, the lion's share of the actual contracts for bridges and infrastructure is actually going to European companies. Non-British companies? Non-British Really? Companies. The lion's share? The lion's share, yes. Is that, has the whole of the 1.7 million tonnes been allocated? No, not yet. So how much of it's been allocated so far? Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here. Yeah, yeah. I think so. it's a, a, a fairly large percentage of being allocated, but uh, as I said, the majority... But within that still... percentage of those 1.7 million tonnes worth of steel contracts... I would say 60% is going to European uh, companies only 40% to UK companies. That's astonishing. Why is that happening, David? Well, I've written to actually the, the CEO at HS2 and asked him the same question. And he wrote back to me and said, well, there's actually no discrimination on location. It's weasel words for saying, actually, we can let the work to anybody, including overseas com companies. And that's wrong. There should actually be some kind of uh, percentage that they must actually let to, Europe, to UK companies. So let me get this straight. You, you know, mainland European governments, they're supporting their steel industry and their steel fabrication industry more anyway. And then our government isn't buying British in terms of steel and fabricated steel to the extent that they could. You're right. It's a double whammy. The, the, the UK industry, uh, government's not supporting the actual steel industry. And when we have public contracts, which are supported by taxpayers' money... The majority of that is actually going to overseas uh, companies and not UK companies. Briefly, David, we're almost out of time, I'm afraid. Just in half a minute or so, paint us a picture of what the UK steel industry could be, what the UK steel fabrication industry could be. We're not going to be the workshop of the world again without being defeatist, but what could we be? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but actually the, the, the UK steel industry is one of the actual best fabrication industries actually in the world. The rest of the world do actually see the... Uh, the uh, energy and the uh, workload that we should put into steel. And I'm trying to actually sort of uh, engage with, with MPs. We've got a whole series of MPs coming round to actually companies uh, that BCSA have uh, around the actual sort of country to, ex to show them the expertise that we have in fabrication. I just think they don't know what's there, Leon. I really don't. Really interesting. Thanks a lot for coming in, Dr. David Moore of the British Constructional Steelworks Association for being my latest guest Thank you. on Money Talks. We'll have you on the show another time, I'm sure.